In this tutorial, we will cover the analysis functions at the top here, starting from the left, the path profile, best server, archive, super layer, and interference. Starting with the path profile tool, if you left click this, half the screen becomes black and some instructions appear telling you to create a link, click on the map, or enter a location. A link is between this menu here, the site TX, and this menu here, the mobile RX. The easiest way to use it is just to left click upon the map. So there we have a path. Now this path allegedly has line of sight because it's green and the Fresnel zone is the red cage around it. I know this isn't true because we have lots of buildings here. So let's go to our environment menu and this is where another benefit of the path comes in in that you can use it to inspect terrain data. So I can see I've got some bare earth DTM. So I've got better data here. I'm going to use the surface DC DSM and repeat. And now we can see the truth. There's buildings and they're blocking the path. We've now gone red as well. So to overcome this block, we probably need more height. So let's go ahead and bump up uh, that receiver height. If I put that up to 12, and we'll see what that gets us. Not very far. But just for demonstration purposes, if we went up to 122, we've now got line of sight and a clear Fresnel zone. If we add another layer, put the land cover on, you can now see colors upon the surface model. And that's because we've layered 10 meter land cover on top of the LiDAR here. And we could also layer that land cover on top of the bare earth DTM by selecting that. So this tool is really useful for seeing the different data. You could also put on the buildings layers. You can output uh, to different formats of this tool. You can take away a PNG image here. And you can take away a KMZ layer. And with the KMZ layer, uh, this provides a 3D KMZ file, which you can look at in Google Earth like so. And you can see the Fresnel zone here. You can see we're on the side of a hill. And I can click that and see the report in here. Now, there's two Fresnel zones listed in this detailed report. Uh, one is the 60%, which is clear. It's the 100% Fresnel zone, which is obstructed. And that is the one that you can see here. So that is the path profile tool. The next tool is the best server tool. Now to use the best server tool, you need a network. So you must have already created a network. And so I've got a network here I created earlier. It has six sites covering uh, Malvern and I want to test coverage. So I'm going to pick a spot that starts at the top of this hill here and let's test coverage. And there we can see um, I can be serviced by quite a few of the towers in this network. And that doesn't come as a surprise because we're on top of a big hill. However, let's move down here uh, into this valley and see what the story is. Uh, well, now we don't have line of sight, uh, but this is a, an LP1 sub gigahertz network, so that might be okay. Uh, but looking at those values, we are not working to those sites over there and we are not working to this one. Uh, we may just be able to reach this one um, if we're using lower WAN. If I come out of the valley here, I can definitely use this one here. Maybe use that one. And you get the idea. The color coding matches your color schema and it's wherever you click on the map. It will show you the links to the best server for that location. The next tool is the archive. Really important part of CloudRF. Uh, this is where you find all your data. So in our archive here, it shows you the most recent network that you've been working with, in this case, uh, the AA uh, Malvern PPA network. And if I was to go up and look at AA Malvern, uh, this is the six sites that I created. I can click the file name and put a site back on the map. I could use the checkboxes here and put them all back on the map uh, using um, either add towers here or add coverage. And add coverage will put the coverage layers on. So now we have added all six layers 
and I can manipulate those using the checkboxes in the top right corner here. Okay, the data can be deleted, so you can go ahead and delete it. I'm not going to do this now, this is why we have a warning. You can download it as a KMZ, you can download it as a KMZ with a special interactive layer which allows you to uh, test coverage. Once you've loaded up that KMZ in Google Earth, that will use credits. You can have a shapefile, a geotiff, a URL, so you can share the results with people via Google Maps, or a piece of HTML embed code uh, to put onto a site like a blog. The archive can be filtered further, so uh, when you're looking at an arc a network, it might have hundreds of cells in, you can just go ahead and filter on the cell name. And so I've found cell F there. That's the archive. All right, the super layer. Uh, the super layer, as the name suggests, creates a really super layer composed of your sites. So you can use this in two ways. You either select a network, which is the recommended way, or you can do a merge visible. If I had lots of layers on the map and they might belong to different layers or different networks, um, I can do a merge visible. The easy way is just merge network. I can give it a name, so I can say, well, I want to call this Malvern, and then I can click Merge Network, and it will go and grab those six sites and create a single layer, and it will call it Malvern. And you can see here, we now have one layer, and it's called Malvern, and we can go ahead and export that. And so I can go and grab that here as a KMZ and go, happy days, I have my KMZ for Malvern. And it's also in my archive um, so that I can go ahead and share it with people. So I could email that as a link to someone and say, hey, here's my entire network. The color schema um, uses your selected color schema. It must be consistent. You can't mix and match when you're doing super layers. Recommended schema for a super layer is a simple color schema and then it's easier for it to, uh, to match and promote the signal levels at the right point. Finally, the interference analysis. Interference analysis is quite similar in concept to the super layer, except you can only pick uh, the, the network. In this case, I'm picking AA Malvern, and I click Go. And this will create a super layer, only this time, instead of creating the entire network map, uh, we're going to assign monotone colors to each site and then promote the strongest site where there's an overlap. So what we're demonstrating here is a network but showing who the stronger tower is for a given point. So if I zoom in um, over here, I can see there's a red and a blue and a purple tower and it's getting a bit messy over here. Uh, but over here, red is dominant and Again, a bit of green action going on there. And over here, yellow is very dominant. So that is the interference tool. And that also exists in your archive under the uh, QRM interference network. And you can export that the same as all the others in open standard GIS formats.